Let's pray as we begin this session. Loving Heavenly Father, we commit this entire session to you. We thank you, precious Holy Spirit, for you are already here with us. We thank you for you are the greatest teacher. And as you lead us and guide us into all truth, and as you teach us today, Holy Spirit of God, we thank you for the revelation that you are about to impart into our spirits, Lord. And we thank you for the, your word that's going to come forth and your word that's going to bring power to the lives of your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise be to his holy name. The price of following Christ is not going to come that easy. And there is a price involved in following Christ. Now, uh, before we get into the message, I want to recommend a good teaching that I also listened to. I didn't know until yesterday that uh, Manju had shared a, a fantastic message about title is All In or All Out. It's the YouTube channel of Revive. I listened to it yesterday. Listen to it. Listen to it. It's a good message. It's a good message. You will get to, you will absorb a lot of spiritual truths from that teaching. And this is how the Holy Spirit is ministering to his servants in this season. So that's, you know, when I listened to that message yesterday, it was very assuring because I'm also hearing right from the Holy Spirit. Because he's taking his servants in the same direction. You know, just because I'm a pastor, it does not mean that I'm better than anyone else. We're all serving the Lord. So listen to that message. It will really help, help you. And uh, the price of following Christ. This will be our title, like I said, for today and for next Wednesday as well. So you need to understand that as a child of God, you need to pay a price when you are following Christ. Now, in Manju's teaching, she mentioned something really beautiful, and that is... Before we became a child of God, we didn't know that we will have to pay a price. No. It's only after we came to know the Lord, it really started dawning on us that, hey, you know, the Christian life is not that simple as, that, as it may seem. Even in my case, you know, I came from a different faith, became a Christian. Before that, I didn't have the, the revelation that I have now about me having to pay a price after becoming a Christian. So it's only after a person becomes born again, which is good, which is must, because without becoming born again, they will not inherit eternal life. So it's only then, when we begin to mature, the revelation begins to dawn on us that there is a price to be paid in order to follow Christ. That's what we're going to look at. So what does paying the price mean? What does it mean to pay the price? You know, whenever you go somewhere to buy something, for example, you go to a supermarket, you buy some groceries, you don't get that free. In exchange for the groceries, to buy it from the supermarket, you give money. Either you give cash or you pay by your card. When a person wants to buy a car, they go and purchase the car and in exchange for the car, they pay money. So when it comes to paying the price, we all know that there is an exchange that takes place. There is an exchange that takes place when it comes to paying a price. Now, Jesus paid the ultimate price for us and there was an exchange. What was the exchange? The Bible tells us that we were once captives. We were, in other words, we were held as hostages by the enemy. Then what happened was, because God knew that we, in our limited ability to save ourselves, that there is nothing that we could have done to free ourselves. So what did God do? He sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to save us. And in exchange for freedom, in exchange for salvation, Jesus was commissioned to the cross. So when it comes to paying the price, we need to understand there is always there is always an exchange. There is a cost involved. When it comes to paying the price, there is an exchange. There is always an exchange. So now, as the child of God, because Jesus has given his life for you and I on the cross, 
we have to give something in return for what Jesus has done for us. That's what Jesus meant in uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse number 21. Sorry, verse number 24. Matthew chapter 16, verse number 24. This is what Jesus meant when he said, he told his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and then follow me. Jesus kept it very plain and simple and said, hey, look here, guys, if anyone wants to follow me, it's not going to be that simple because number one, they have to deny themselves. And then number two, they have to take up their cross and follow me. Now, this is where you need to understand that today there are so many doctrines that excludes this. They exclude this. They say that when you uh, become a Christian, Everything becomes, you know, so easy. It becomes so tikaribu. No, things become easy. Why? Because you have the Holy Spirit. But whenever a person says that when you become a child of God, that you will not have to face challenges, that is a, a deceiving doctrine right there. Unless otherwise, Jesus would have never said this in, Ma uh, in Matthew 16, verse 24, that you have to, number one, deny yourself. And also, you have to, to take up your cross. He didn't say, you first deny me and then you follow me. He said, you deny me and then you take up your cross and then follow me. So we looked at even last uh, Saturday when we were doing about uh, our study about uh, rapture and the, and the seven uh, churches in the book of Revelation. If you remember when we looked at the church of the Atirva, we looked at what taking up the cross means there. So let me, for the benefit of those of you, who have uh, who were not there last Saturday? This is what it means to take up the cross. The taking up the cross means setting aside self-interest. It's number one, setting aside self-interest. Number two, you express a willingness to endure whatever may come. That's what taking up the cross means. Taking up the cross also means believing in Jesus, then conforming to His example in living. Then suffering for him, even if, if it requires for you to give up your own life. This is what it means to take up the cross. Taking up the cross means setting aside self-interest, express a willingness to endure whatever that may come your way. You believe in Jesus, you conform to his example in living, and then you suffer for him, even if that means you have to give up your own life for Jesus. So that's what it means when it comes to taking up your cross. So like I said, Jesus kept it very clear by saying, look here, guys, it's not going to be that simple. You have to take up your cross whether you like it or not. Now, we have to uh, answer a very important question. Why do you have to pay a price to follow Christ? Why do you have to pay a price in order to follow Christ? Let me give you three reasons. Number one, you are an ambassador of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 20 says, you are an ambassador of Christ. Now, you need to understand that, uh, that as an ambassador of Christ, you can't do things the way you wish. For example, a person who becomes an ambassador of a country or a uh, or an organization that is sent to another place to represent that organization or that country, they can't conduct themselves the, they, the way they want. They have to conduct themselves in such an orderly way in order to represent the person or the organization that has sent them. They must represent that organization well. So you need to represent Christ on earth in a very orderly manner. You have to represent Jesus on earth with responsibility in order for you to do that, you need to pay a price because an ambassador can't conduct themselves the way they want. Let me say that again. An ambassador can't conduct themselves the way they want. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 20. Then the second reason you need to understand, the Christian life is demanding. Your life as a child of God 
the moment you became born again from that moment your life became even more demanding your life became even more demanding because you are an ambassador of Christ your life is very demanding now because Jesus has placed certain things over your life reason number 3 without paying the price there won't be much power without paying the price there won't be much power so in order for you and i to understand what this means without paying the price there won't be much power we will look at 12 different things that you have to do in order to pay the price so in other words we will be looking at 12 things that are involved in paying the price as a child of god today we are not going to look at all 12 we are going to only look at six the first six and we will look at the the other six next week because we need time to go through one by one slowly so here is the first way that you have to pay the price in order to follow christ number one is your calling your calling is demanding you must know as a child of god that you are called by god the bible tells us in 2 timothy chapter 1 verse number 9 who has saved us and called us with a holy calling now you will see how this is demanding you no know, in these are paul's instructions to timothy and paul in these instructions to timothy he is highlighting how timothy's calling in the lord is demanding he says who has saved us and called us with a holy calling not according to our works you are not called according to your work timothy but you are called according to god's own purpose and grace hallelujah so you need to understand your calling is an area where you need to pay the price with you have to pay the price with your calling by being number one you have to be obedient to get into your calling then you have to remain faithful in your calling you have to be faithful to remain to function in your calling in Christ that's something that you can give in exchange for what Jesus has done for you on Calvary because he has called you with a holy calling and now today you have to be faithful and when you are faithful in your calling that is something that you can give in return back to Jesus number 1 your calling that's an area where you have to pay a price you know sometimes when you step into your calling you have to make a massive price because remaining sometimes you know getting into your calling will require you to sacrifice certain things that happened with me when i uh, said yes to my calling in 2014 one of the first instructions that god gave me was son stop your business that time i was into event management i had my own event management company so i had to sacrifice that this is why i say the calling is demanding god will get you in your calling to do things that you never wanted to do the last thing i wanted to do back in the days was to to teach and to preach i never thought that i will end up becoming a preacher Moses when he you know when God spoke to him he said how can I I, I can't talk I, I stammer no to, uh, it came to a place where God got quite angry with that guy and he said you know take care on your cousin I will speak through him so your calling is demanding because in your calling very often you will find those very things that you did not want to do God will get you to do those very those very things and that's how you call in functions because the bible says every single child of god is called every single person in this zoom session right now you are called by god you need to know what your calling is you need to get into your calling you have to submit to his calling then you have to function in his calling you have to be faithful to him in his calling the calling is not a joke it's a big picture the calling is a big picture 
So you have to pay a price in your calling. And one of the ways that you pay the price in your calling is with obedience. And when you have to obey God, that will pull every single thing out of you. You know, when God spoke to Moses and said, I want you to go, go up to Pharaoh, his legs would have started shivering because he, he knew who Pharaoh was. And he said, Lord, you know about this guy, he will not, you know, he won't let them go that easily. God said, don't worry, I will bring plagues after them, one after the other. And then on the other hand, he had another challenge. The children of Israel, they were not the easiest to deal with. They were really murmuring. They used to shout at that guy, that poor innocent guy who was trying to you know, deliver them out of the hands of you know, Pharaoh, even after, they took the, even after he took them out of Egypt. You can see the number of times they were, they were shouting at uh, Moses. For example, when they came uh, to the Red Sea, when they, when they were cornered there, just before God parted the Red Sea, these guys started shouting at Moses and saying, why did you bring us out of Egypt? We could have you know, lived better, a much better life there. And now you have brought us here to a place where we are now cornered. And those guys are breathing down on our necks. You know, within a couple of minutes, they'll be here. And we are going to be slaughtered here. Weren't there enough and more graves back in Egypt? So these are the kind of... You know, Moses was in a place where he realized his calling was so demanding. Now, we realize how de demanding was his calling, how Moses' calling was demanding, because on one hand, God is putting pressure on him, saying, don't worry, you know, Pharaoh will not be able to do anything to you. Go and tell the guy, tell, tell him straight to his face, I want you to, God says, you need to let these people go. And this guy was saying, no, no matter who God is, no matter what he says, I am not going to let these people go. And God was still pressurizing Moses, saying, go, 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 I want you to go and tell. And on the other side, the very guys that he was going to deliver, they were also you know, complaining. So your calling is demanding. Your calling is demanding because God will place very strong demands on your life. You need to understand that in your calling, you have to live by faith. Living by faith is demanding. It's not a joke. You can ask those people here who are living by faith. Ask them and see whether it was that easy in the beginning. It wasn't easy for me in the beginning as well. Living by faith, it will just pull everything out of you. So you have to pay the price in your calling by living by faith. You learn to live by faith. You learn to trust the law. You know, it's, it's something, you know, to, to know the scriptures. It's something to experience the scriptures coming into reality. So you have to pay a price in your calling. And one of the greatest ways that you have to pay a price in your calling is by being obedient, is by being obedient. Number two, here is the second way that you have to pay the price. Now, so all of these things that I'm going to share is going to flow, it'll be flowing from one to the other. We looked at the calling. Now here's the second one, spiritual understanding. Spiritual understanding is another way that you have to pay the price because before you became a child of God, before you became a Christian, everything to you was so natural. You no, know, it was about the fancy cars, the house, house the money. You no, know, it was all these earthly things and the natural things that meant everything to you. If you were after a spiritual answer, you were also maybe would have been in a different faith. And without knowing Jesus, you don't get the right, the true spiritual understanding. But now when you become a child of God, once you realize that you have a calling that God has called you with, you begin to realize, hey, hold on. I can't know anything about this calling with a natural understanding. That's a good one there. You realize you can't learn about scripture. I can't learn about my calling without being able to understand spiritual things. The Bible says spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Now, let me show you an example where spiritual understanding and God's will for you is interconnected. Colossians chapter one, verse number nine. Colossians chapter one, verse number nine. Again, the words of Paul. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, 
do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of God's will through what? In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Paul is telling, we, are, we have not ceased to pray for you when he was addressing the church in Colossae. He was telling, we are praying that you will be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So you need to understand, my precious brothers and sisters in Christ, another way that you have to pay the price is by developing your ability to understand spiritual things. Because now when you become a child of God, you realize that you are no longer governed by natural things. You realize you are governed by spiritual laws. For example, faith is a spiritual law. You realize that you are no longer under natural things, but you are governed by spiritual laws. So then you realize you need to have that spiritual understanding in order for you to understand even about your calling because Paul is telling you need to have spiritual understanding in order to understand God's will for you. He mentions another important component here, wisdom. Wisdom, again, is a spiritual principle. So you need to pay a price where you strive to Drain your ability to understand spiritual things and where you have to pay the price here is by developing a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit who reveals spiritual truths. It's the Holy Spirit who imparts revelation into us. So here the price that you have to pay is developing a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit. Before we became born again, you know, we, I don't know about you all, but I had so many good friends. I've, I had hundreds and hundreds of friends. After I came to know the Lord, after I became born again, when I, after, when, especially after I started serving the Lord, I don't know what happened to these friendships. So after that, you know, I, I realized that you no, know, I can't be naturally mind. I realized what Paul said in uh, Romans chapter 8, I believe it's in verse number 11, he said, you have to be spiritually minded to understand spiritual things. So here you have to pay the price. In your calling, you have to be obedient with spiritual understanding. You have to pay the price by developing a strong relationship with the precious Holy Spirit of God unless otherwise you will not be able to understand spiritual things. Hallelujah. The book of Corinthians, I believe it's in a... a 1 Corinthians chapter 2, but I'll give you the, the, the exact reference, says spiritual things are spiritually discerned. It doesn't say, Paul did not say spiritual things are naturally discerned. He said spiritual things are spiritually discerned. As a matter of fact, he said the natural man, you know, it's funny that how I can remember certain uh, scriptures word by word, but sometimes I, I, I don't remember the exact reference, but this is how it goes. You know, he says, the natural man can't receive anything that is from the spirit of God because spiritual things are spiritually discerned. That's the big one right there. So you and I, we have to pay the price there by developing a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit. This is why, you know, in our teachings, I always keep telling that you need to have a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit. Unless otherwise, you will not be able to pay the price right. Amen. Now we come to the third area where you have to pay the price. Thank you, Manchu. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 11. That's the reference for that. The third way that you have to pay a price is with sacrifices, or you can also say tests. You need to understand that as a child of God, that you will be tested you will be tested. There is a doctrine, there's a teaching that says that a Christian will not be tested. You can say yes to that kind of a teaching or a doctrine if that's what the Bible says, but the Bible very emphatically says that a child of God, that is you and I, that we will be tested. So like I said, right at the beginning, in the process of functioning in your calling is 
there will be sacrifices that you have you have to make but time and time again you will be tested god himself will also test us without being tested we can't be really trusted with great things without being tested we don't end up becoming powerful gold has to you know first go through unbearable heat it has to be refined so without being tested we will not be refined in christ we all know how god tested abraham in genesis chapter 22 verse 1 and 2 God said Abraham take your son your only son Isaac whom you love so much and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you God tested Abraham's faith Abraham is the the type of person the moment he heard that he called his son he got everything ready He wasn't the he wasn't the type of person who you know, took, took a moment and was think yeah oh, am i really hearing the voice of god maybe i'm just listening to my own self no 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 he acted on it you will be tested without being tested you can't be trusted remember that and let me show you what the bible says about the promises that god gives you in psalm 105 Psalm 105 verses 17 to 19 the bible says he sent a man before them joseph who was sold as a slave now it's talking about joseph in the old testament they hurt his feet with fetters he was laid in iron until the time that his word came to pass the word of the lord tested him there you go the word of the lord tested him in other words the psalmist is saying there was a guy called joseph in the old testament who received a revelation from god about his future through dreams we all know what happened he saw dreams and he shared that with his family that his brother started envying him because of this very reason because he saw in his dreams that the interpretation was that in time to come his family was you know will, will be bowing, bowing down to him which happened eventually the bible tells us this word this dream this revelation this promise that god gave joseph tested him the word of the lord tested him the kjv version says the word of the lord tried him so when you receive a promise from god when you receive a word from god along the way you will be tested you will be tested before you know when god was speaking to me when i was in our previous ministry when he says son your time here is coming to an end i want you to leave you know i gave my uh, i gave 6 months notice and then i left after that there was a waiting time of about one and a half years where i was tested because god said before that i am going to bless you with your own ministry and until that happened i was tested to an extent where the last day of my uh, you know uh, my last day in our previous ministry was the day that the churches were bombed in sri lanka these tests so when that happened i was also think oh was i hearing right from the lord you no know, what a farewell you know usually when it comes to the farewell of a person they will cut the cake sing and you know you know they they will be in a very happy sense that person off in my case you know they bombed the churches and said okay bye bye you also get out of this church <laughs> so i'm being honest i was thinking when that happened when i was seeing in the news my goodness churches are being bombed oh boy did i take the right decision was i hearing right from the lord so you need to understand that the word the promise that god gives you will be tested so number 3 sacrifices or tests you need to pass this test you have to show god that you are able you are able to overcome this test and this is an area where you pay the price when you follow christ there are some of you in this session where you have you know uh, 
I had to go through certain uh, challenging times, sicknesses and all of that. But you have endured well because you know that you have to, you know, God does not test with the sicknesses and all that. But when that something like that comes up, we have to show that we are being grounded in the Lord. You know, with, even with a sprained ankle, with a damaged leg. No, I have to show God that I will still preach. That I will not just cancel our, you know, the, the midweek sessions and the Sunday services. No, you have to remain faithful. You have to pass the tests that come your way when you are tested. Amen. So the third way. Sorry, the, 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 the first was the calling, then spiritual understanding. Number three is sacrifices and tests. Here comes the fourth way that you have to pay the price. And it's a big one. The fourth way that you have to pay the price is with time. You have to pay a big price with your time. Time is another way where you have to pay a massive price because when God gives you a promise, sometimes he might keep you for quite a while until that promise comes to pass. Like I said, I had to wait for one and a half years for me to see that promise being unveiled. Abraham had to stay for nearly two and a half decades to see the promise come into pass. So when it comes to time, one of the ways where you have to pay a price is by giving time to someone very important. We are very good at giving people time in our lives. We give time to our spouse. We give time to our uh, the family members. We give time to our friends to meet up with them for a coffee or maybe just to go out for dinner. But you need to pay a price when it comes to time by giving the Holy Spirit time. This is an area where you have to pay a price. You have to give the Holy Spirit the most important time for you every single day. You have to learn to pay this price. Because unless you do this, you will not be building a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You know, now let me ex explain it to you this way. Now, uh, Rami and I, we have known each other for, I think, uh, at least six years. So everything that's been hap happening for the last six years. Now, our relationship is, is very strong. You know, we have a good friendship between us because over the years, our friendship has been developing. The same way your relationship with the Holy Spirit, listen to this carefully, your relationship with the Holy Spirit for it to become strong, it will take time. It's not going to happen overnight. You know, you didn't just, you know, meet uh, the person who are, you are married to now. No, you didn't get married to that person overnight. You took a while to get to know that person, to understand that person, to know what they like, what they dislike. You spend maybe a couple of months or maybe a couple of years before you tie the knot. The same way your relationship with the Holy Spirit is going to cost you time. If you are interested in having a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit, which you must, you need to be interested. That's what you must work towards. But that's going to cost you. It's going to cost you a price and that price is time. If you don't give him time, you will not be able to make your relationship with the Holy Spirit a strong one. You know, I, I, I'm sensing the Holy Spirit telling me, some tell them that they can have just a relationship with me, but they can also have a strong relationship with me. You can have a relationship with the Holy Spirit of God, and you can also have a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit. There is a big difference. There is a big difference. You don't have, you know, just a normal relationship with your spouse. It's a strong relationship that you have with the person you are married to. Unless otherwise, you will not be married to that person in the first place. The same way, the Holy Spirit wants us to have a strong relationship with him. Now, here comes another important thing. If we don't do this, if we don't develop our relationship 
with the Holy Spirit, we will not learn to wait on the Lord. We will not learn to wait on the Lord because the person who makes it easier for us to wait on the Lord is the Holy Spirit. The Bible is very clear about waiting on the Lord. The book of Psalms tells us that those who wait upon the Lord, they will inherit nations. Let me give another example. Isaiah 40 verse number 31 says, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. So now this is a good place. Isaiah 40 verse number 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. How do they renew their strength? You know, you don't renew their strength by waiting on the Lord and just by looking up and waiting. You don't renew their, your strength like that. In order for you to renew your strength, something needs to happen. One thing that needs to happen in order for you to renew your strength is fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. If that does not happen, you and I, we will not be strengthening. Our, our strength will not be renewed. Then it says, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Learn to pay a price with time. That's one of the areas you have to pay a price. And when we say paying a price, all these are good ways of paying price. Jesus has not called us. No, he doesn't say, no, no, uh, because I shed my blood for you, you also have to shed your blood for me. No, no, no. He's only asking us to do what he has called us to do. And we have to pay a price as a child of God in different ways. Amen. So time is a crucial area where we have to pay a price. Then comes another important one. Commitment, number five. Commitment. In Manju's teaching, I heard Manju also sharing about this. Commitment. You have to pay a price with commitment. You have to be committed. You have to be committed to your calling. You have to be committed not to deny Christ. Jesus said, if anyone honors me, if anyone confesses me, I will confess that person before my father. But if anyone denies me, I will also deny that person in the presence of my father. You need to be committed to your marriage. Marriage is where a commitment, your commitment is really demanded. You have to be committed. You have to be committed when it comes to serving God. No matter what. What challenge comes your way? You have to make up your mind to be committed. You know, one of the most committed, you know, the most committed person I find in the Bible is Jesus. There's no one who will you know who will ever come near Jesus. He's our ultimate role model. Now, other than Jesus, another person that really impresses me when it comes to their commitment is Paul. Paul was such a committed person. My goodness, in Acts chapter 14, you know, it's a beautiful chapter. They, you know, the Lord healed a, guy, a, a man who was lame from the mother's womb through Paul. The latter part of that chapter, the guy gets stoned and people thought that he was dead. It happened in Lystra. Two days later, the guy gets up and he goes to, I think, Derby to preach the gospel. The person where two days ago, he got stoned and people thought he had died. Two days later, he gets up and he's on his way again to preach the gospel, knowing that there's a group of Jews who are following him just to persecute him. Look at the commitment these people had. Let me share an example from Paul's commitment to preach the gospel. You know, each and every one of us, we are called to preach the gospel. It's not just me. You know, who, who is a pastor who is called to preach the gospel. You are called to share the gospel as well in your own way, to the people that God brings into your life. So here's an example of Paul's commitment to preach the gospel. In Acts 21, in Acts chapter 21, I'll be reading from verses 10 to 14. After we had been there a number of days, a prophet 
named Agabus came down from Judea. Coming over to us, he took Paul's belt, tied his own hands and feet with it and said, the Holy Spirit says, in this way, the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem will bind the owner of this belt and will hand him over to the Gentiles. When we heard this, we and the people there pleaded with Paul not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, now listen to this, the words of Paul. Why are you weeping and breaking my heart? I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at this. You know, there's a lot of debate about this, uh, this, this couple of verses saying, you know, some say when the Holy Spirit of God was speaking through Agabus and saying that Paul will be, you know, persecuted. Why on earth did Paul continue? So we are not getting into any arguments like that. Look at the commitment of Paul. The disciples, they start pleading to Paul saying, don't go to Jerusalem, you are going to be bound. Look at the courage of Paul. He turns to these guys and says, look here, I'm not, no, no matter what comes my way, I'm even willing to give up my life in Jerusalem for Jesus if I have to do that. Look at the commitment. Let me share an example from about Jesus' commitment. This is where you know, that food didn't become a distraction to Jesus. You know, uh, you must be thinking I'm about to share Luke 4 and Matthew 4, that Jesus was you know, uh, praying in the wilderness. No, 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 no. Let me give you a better example. In John chapter 4, verse 31 to 34, John chapter 4, we find Jesus meeting the Samaritan woman by Jacob's well. Now here, after he was talking to, to uh, the Samaritan woman, the Bible tells us she went back to the city to tell the people in the city that she had met the Messiah. And then while she was there in the city, the disciples came back. They had gone to the city to buy food. So they came back to Jesus and said, Rabbi, eat something. And Jesus said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, did someone bring food for him? Jesus said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Look at the commitment of Jesus. Because Jesus knew that after this woman had gone to the city, she was going to bring the people back. How do we know this? Because when the people came back and then they listened to what Jesus had to say, they asked Jesus to stay for a couple of days. And I believe Jesus stayed for about two days there with them. So you have to be committed. You have to be committed. Commitment is another way where you pay a price. You have to pay a price with your commitment. Hallelujah. Here comes the sixth way that you have to pay a price with. Maybe we will uh, look at the seventh way also and we will stop it there for today. The sixth way, whether you like it or not, you have to do it in order for you to pay the price. Okay? And the sixth way you have to pay the price is with forgiveness. Forgiveness. You have to pay a price there. Jesus changed it all together. The Old Testament said, an eye for an eye. You just get back at the person who does something wrong to you. That's what the Old Testament said. But Jesus, in Matthew chapter 5, verse number 44, Jesus said, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spy you use you and persecute you. Forgiveness is an area that will really challenge you. It'll test you. It'll test you and it'll pull everything out of you. you know, it's very easy for a person to preach about you know, forgiveness and all that. It's so easy for people to talk. But when something happens to you, when you have to forgive, oh, that's when you will find it really challenging. You have to pay a price here. I had to pay a massive price here 
that I was in our, in our previous ministry. Because of a false accusation, now some of you might uh, you know, get, get a shock for hearing this. Because of a false accusation, I was told not to come to church for nearly two and a half months. By that time, I have served for about four years in the ministry. I had been faithful, but because of a false accusation, they said, until up until we tell you that you can come back, please don't come to church on Sunday. And I was the assistant pastor. It's all because of false accusations. And then when you are suddenly struck by something like that, uh, you begin to wonder, now what did I do wrong? Lord, help me. Now those days, you know, I, I was you know, giving the gospel to my mom. I didn't want her to know. So what I did was those Sundays, I would wake up in the morning, like I'm going to church, I would get dressed. And I ended up going to, you know, there's a, a pastor who used to work together with me called Timothy. I used to go to Timothy's place. And he will put, you know, arrange live stream for me to watch the service on live stream. And from there, he, I will stay at his place and he used to go to church. So this happened for about six to seven weeks. So then, you know, these things happen. You get, that's why I said, you will be tested. And then when you are tested, remember your character will be tested. When your character is tested, your conduct will be tested. How you conduct yourself when you are tested. Then your ability to forgive. You know, after that incident happened, I stayed in the ministry for another almost one and a half years. Even when I heard God telling me that my time was coming up, I still gave notice for six months. I gave notice for six months and that's how I left the ministry. So you need to understand you have to pay a price with forgiveness. When people falsely accuse you, you have to bless them. Don't start cursing them. It's not going to do any good to you. Amen. So we'll stop with the next one. So today we'll have, uh, we have had looked seven ways then. The next week we can look at another six or seven. Here is another way that you have to pay the price. The seventh way. Enduring hardships. Enduring hardships. Oh, this is a good one. Does the Bible speak about enduring hardships? Absolutely. You and I, we have to endure hardships. But out of the you know, many verses that I can use here to share with you, there's a verse that I really like, which really you know, um, speaks about this beautifully. So that verse is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 3. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 3. Again, the words of Paul to Timothy, and he says, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You end your hardness, Timothy, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, when you think about a soldier, a soldier is a person who is trained not to complain. Listen to this and listen to this word, please. When soldiers are trained in the military, they are trained, number one, not to complain. Because when they are sent into the battlefield, if they get separated from their unit and if they have to fight by themselves, they can't just go to a corner, you know, stay under a tree and start crying and thinking, ah, oh, where are the rest of the guys and that guy, you know, say, I want my mommy, this, that, and the other. No, it's not going to do them any good. They are trained not to complain. That's how military personnel are trained. Even if they have to endure a hardship, all by, by themselves in the battlefield. They are trained not to complain. They are trained to endure any kind of weather, that is, any harsh weather patterns. Whether there is no water, this is, whether there is a drought in the place where they are, or whether it's rainy, whether there's, there are thunderstorms, whatever. Even if they are by themselves, they are trained to endure all these difficulties by themselves. So Paul is telling to Timothy, 
you empty your hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So here, there are so many things that we need to learn. We need to learn to pay the price, number one, by ourselves. That's why I said a soldier, even if when they get separated from the unit, they will still pay the price by themselves. They will still keep fighting by themselves. They will not give up because that's not how they are trained. If you train yourself with the word of God, the word of God will train you not to give up. Even when you have to fight and battle by yourself. You know, when that happened, when that incident happened to me when I was in a previous ministry, I realized, my goodness, that there was no one who could help me. I realized that there was no one in the church who could do anything to bring me back. I had to rely on God and God alone. If you train yourself with the word of God, no matter if you have to endure hardships by yourself, because mind you, there will be times, you know, quite often when you have to endure hardships, you will be able to share it with other people, with your friends in Christ, who will you know, pray together with you, you know, encourage you and do all of that. At the same time, there are certain challenges that comes our way where other people, people can only do very little to us. There are certain situations like that. There are certain situations where you can't really share that burden because you yourself, you don't understand, number one, to share that burden with the other person. That's the kind of situation that I was saying. No one would have really understood the situation that you were in. So remember, you are called to endure hardship as a soldier in Christ, a soldier number one who does not complain. Remember, soldiers are trained not to complain. Soldiers are complained to, to uh, soldiers are trained not to complain and they are trained to endure any form of hardship. So learn to pay the price by enduring hardships as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We'll look at the next uh, six to seven ways that you have to pay the price next week. So what we looked at today was the calling, how you have to pay the price in your, in your calling with spiritual understanding, with your tests that come your way, with sacrifices, how you have to pay a price, with time, how you have to pay a massive price by developing a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit, your commitment, forgiveness and by enduring hardships. Glory be to God. I pray that this teaching would have been a blessing to you and that it will help you in your calling as you keep functioning in your calling and you keep doing the things that God has called you to do. And we will meet again next Wednesday to discuss the rest of the, the, the six or seven ways. God bless you.